Hey, Ryan here. In this video, I'm going to go over a few of the lesser known strategies that I have picked up through my nearly almost 5,000 hours of playtime in War Thunder, and with generally 80% of that time being spent in ground battles. But throughout this video, definitely keep in mind that the actual most important ways to get better at ground forces in War Thunder is map knowledge, vehicle knowledge, game sense, and awareness of your surroundings and match events, such as watching the kill feed, the minimap, and helping teammates when they ping or call out for help. And explaining all of those things is more or less impossible because they're very time-based, and I won't be talking about them in this video. But right before we get into the tips, a quick reminder to make a sacrifice to the YouTube algorithm gods because it really helps me out. All right, here we go. Now, my first tip might seem extremely basic, and honestly it is, but if you're new to the game, you might not know how useful this is just yet. And that is binocular view. The War Thunder tip screen is really not kidding here. Use your binoculars because they're free and they're incredibly powerful. Granted, on some maps, they may not be as useful, such as city maps, but it is what it is. The use of binoculars touches on another general gameplay tip that I'm going to mention really quickly, and that is the use of a battle position. And where I have my tank set up right now is a battle position. The purpose of this is to be in cover completely while still having vision on the enemies that you want to kill or defend yourself from. And binocular use is a critical component of a battle position because it allows you to peek over a hill while remaining completely concealed, identify targets, lay your gun, and then peek to fire. So this T-55, let's pre-laze him, because you can laze or range find through binoculars as well, and align your gun where you're aiming by holding left click, go into the gunner view, peek the hill, and then our gun is right where we need it to be, engage the target, and then hide again. Employing battle positions in this way allows you to minimize your own exposure to return fire and pick and choose when you want to engage the enemy. Also, of course, some vehicles aren't very good at this because they have no reverse gear. But that's where it's up to you to have your own knowledge of the vehicles you're fighting and the vehicles that you're using and employ them correctly. And of course, if you're a light tank enjoyer, then binoculars allow you to scout from complete cover. Just remember that if you are trying to remain completely concealed while using binoculars, make sure that the terrain lines up with the bottom of the tanks that you're looking at. Because while binocular view is decently high above your vehicle, it's really not that high. As I'll demonstrate here by switching to my machine gun, looking over the ridge, and then going into binocular view. So the machine gun is pretty much as high as the binoculars are. I think they're just slightly higher above the machine gun. So if you really want to be concealed and sneaky, as low as possible while still seeing what you want to see. This brings us straight into my next tip, and this is honestly one of my most used strategies in the game to win one-on-one -on -one fights against hyper-aggressive players. So just imagine for a second that this T-62 is something much scarier and is being highly aggressive against me and my position. This guy is coming directly towards me and is probably going to try and shoot my breach when he peeks the ridge. This enemy could potentially shoot your breach before you even see them especially if you're on a snow map. So what I personally do to combat this is something that I just call third-person pre-aiming. The idea here is pretty simple. You just place the large reticle, which directs where your barrel should aim, and then peek the ridge while paying attention to the smaller reticle, which shows where your barrel is intersecting with terrain or objects. So since this T-62 is trying to peek me and get my breach, I'm going to counter peek and fire as soon as the reticle crosses over the terrain. Now just to demonstrate again with this T-55, as soon as the reticle crosses over the terrain and matches up on his vehicle, you can see that I'm actually looking through this dirt right here. And you can still shoot directly through it. No issues. If you're really comfortable with this strategy and you have some good eyes, you can even do it at slightly longer ranges. Now let's see if I can get this T-64 800 meters. I got his gunner. That's good enough for me. But you get the point. And this strategy, of course, applies to any scenario where you have direct visual on the enemy that you want to shoot and have an object between you and them. Just drive until you see the inner reticle cross over and then take the shot. Now, even though I personally play on really bad ping, generally around 200 milliseconds because I just have bad internet, I get the first shot off about 90% of the time. I don't think anybody can really retaliate against that. 
Okay, well apparently you can't use squad pings in a custom battle, so I have to try and do this next tip in an actual battle. And so yeah, this next tip is about using the squadron ping. If you don't have this key bound, you can find it in the common controls section and just search for squad. So this kind of ties into binocular use as well, but if you see an enemy and you're not a light tank, you can drop a squad ping on them and ping it on the map. I know he's already scouted, just, just give this one to me, okay? Hey, nice, I found an example of third-person pre-aiming through objects. Here, just putting the marker right on this T-54 and shooting through these walls. Unfortunately, he decided to survive, so we'll have to shoot him again. Okay, I know this is terrible, but if you're using a light tank and you're in your scout drone and you want to shoot somebody that you can't actually see, oh god, I'm going to hell, just drop a squad ping right on the edge of them where you want to hit, go back into your vehicle, lays right on the ping, and fire. There you go. Now you can shoot through 20 bushes and two fences. And another quick tip if you're a drone enjoyer, let's just say this Stuart is alive and you want to know where he is, just drop the squad ping and look over towards it. That way you're much less likely to get lost when looking for a target after you spot them in your drone. And also another tip using this poor little dead M3, if you want to drop accurate artillery on somebody but you can't really guess the distance, just drop a squad ping and put artillery directly onto it. And since I'm here, I'll just use this opportunity to talk about another one of my tips, which is positioning over points. So instead of going from this capture point and going to capture C and then being on this side of the map, you could go directly for B, or you could also push past B and go where I've gone. I didn't do incredibly well in this match, but it did get me five kills and four assists. So that's just a little bit of food for thought. Instead of going for the low risk, low reward, straight to the capture point, maybe consider going for positioning over points. I also want to briefly touch on some game settings. Now, audio for me is one of the most important ways that I locate where enemies are, especially on urban maps. Turning down SFX, my engine, and gunfire volume as low as they can go, while at the same time turning other players' engines as high as it can go, will bias the sound mix towards other players' engines. And now the settings that I would personally recommend you adjust is everything else. As you can see, I have almost everything turned off. And my reasoning for this is to reduce clutter in the audio mix. So the things like speech and radio chat volume are really just ambient noise that you could get distracted by. And let's be honest here. Do you really need to hear, we are losing, ever again? No, I don't think you do. Oh yeah, and definitely have your speakers mode on stereo. Unless you're playing on speakers for some reason and actually have a legitimate need for 5 or 7.1. Stereo is going to be your best bet in 99% of cases, even if you have one of those snake oil surround headsets. They're bullshit. And the final setting is speed of sound, which is truly personal preference, and I choose to keep it on. This just makes it so that a distant tank shot will take some time to travel to you instead of being played immediately when you visually see the tank fire. Now I want to briefly touch on one specific controls option, that being fix gun direction in mouse view. Now this option is disabled by default, and when you use free look and turn your tank, this is what happens. Your point of aim maintains the direction that you initially held mouse look in. Now this may be useful in some scenarios, and I think most players that haven't touched this setting would most likely be used to this behavior by now. But now with that option enabled, I want to bring to your attention a strategy that many of you may not know about. This is what happens when you enable fixed gun direction in mouse view. I'm holding free look, and essentially my gun is fixed to the hull. And I'm sure many of you have been caught in that scenario where you're just looking at your enemy waiting for your gun to lift up, like this. But again, with fixed gun direction in mouse view enabled and while holding free look, when you drive over obstacles, your gun will remain fixed forwards, essentially locked in place. And now just a few other miscellaneous controls that I would recommend you bind to some key. You don't have to do it to the same key as I have it because I have very different controls. And by the way, you can find my controls file posted on my Discord server. So definitely have select machine gun and reset weapon selection bound to some keys. This will allow you to independently select your anti-air machine gun and aim it over hills or independently from the turret so you don't have to worry about the weird aim shifting. And reset weapon selection just so you can go back to normal. This command can also be accessed through the multifunction menu, which by default is on Y. 
Additionally, Commander Sight is a very powerful tool on some vehicles. And if you do choose to bind and use Commander Sight, then don't forget to bind Commander Fire Control. And if you do use Commander Sights often, when you start a match, just go in and enable Commander Fire Control so you don't forget. This control could be considered personal preference, but if you find mouse wheel ground vehicles and set it to sight distance control, then you can use your mouse wheel to adjust your ranging. Personally, for me, I feel like this is much more useful than zooming smoothly between the upper and lower limits of your sight's zoom, which is what the zoom axis ground setting does. And of course, rangefinder, which I'm really not sure if it's bound by default, but it's there and you should definitely bind a key to it. And also one that is often overlooked is crosshair lighting, which toggles between the two available color modes for every sight on every vehicle. I think by default it's just black and red. This can be very useful even if you're not on a night map, because some city maps like Breslau and Advance to the Rhine have really dark surfaces. You don't have to go through every vehicle in the game and look at their stat cards and x-rays, but let's say you just unlocked your T26 E5 or what have you and you want to know a little more about it. And the first step to getting the most value out of your vehicle is knowing its capabilities. Well, the stat card only gives you so much information. If you go to the x-ray view, then you can mouse over a lot of these components and see more detailed information. For example, when mousing over the cannon breach of vehicles, you get a lot of useful information that is not displayed in the stat card. And in this case, you can see that the T26 E5 has 10 rounds of first stage ammo, a fully 360 degree traversable turret, and 3 degrees of vertical targeting speed, as well as not being stabilized, because as you can see here, stabilized vehicles will show gun stabilizer and either be vertical or two plane. And additionally, by mousing over your ammo racks, you will eventually find the first stage ammo itself. And you can see here that it's stored on the left turret cheek by the loader. Additionally, you can see the zoom levels of your gunner and commander optics. Here, this gunner optic is four to eight times. And as seen here on the T92, this is a commander optic with a fixed five times zoom. Now, another piece of critical information that is not displayed in the stat card is the reverse speed of the vehicle. And seen here by mousing over the transmission, it is 11.8 kilometers per hour in reverse. And of course, on higher tier vehicles, as seen here with the T80 BVM, you can see modules such as explosive reactive armor and other armor modules. And another piece of information that is not displayed in stat cards is the presence of an automatic loading system, which you can also see by mousing over the cannon breach. And of course, there's a lot of other really neat things that you can see by looking at the x-ray view, so I would definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't. And that's all I've got for you in this video. Let me know if you like this style of content, and if you would like me to do more tips and tricks on specific topics, just drop it down in a comment.